where something like an enterprise data warehouse absolutely needs to be informed, but it is not in the critical path of actually processing that message. It's not involved in the movement of the money. Some key architectural evaluations that I've seen help FIs as they integrate with RTP include first, separating out critical processing systems from those systems that just need to be informed. Second, determining if interactions should be synchronous or asynchronous. And third is doing performance budget analysis and focusing first on those flows that directly impact the clearinghouse's five second service level agreement. So first, separating out systems that are absolutely critical to processing a given RTP message, such as a credit transfer, from the other systems that just need to be informed. Now this may sound obvious, but it can be pretty surprising if you ask a group of folks representing those different systems to raise their hand if they are critical to a given flow. Uh, how many of them would raise their hand and say, yes, I'm critical. But upon deeper analysis, you find out that maybe there's just two or three systems that are absolutely critical. And the other ones absolutely need to be informed, but like a near real-time messaging may, may be sufficient for them. For example, in the case of a credit transfer, your core system absolutely needs to be in the critical path. Whereas something like an enterprise data warehouse absolutely needs to be informed, but it is not in the critical path of actually processing that message. It's not involved in the movement of the money. So as long as they are informed in a near real-time fashion, that will be adequate. This leads to a second key activity, determining whether synchronous or asynchronous integration is the most appropriate for each system that's gonna be involved in your overall RTP solution. It may be that many systems needs can be satisfied asynchronously, while for others, synchronous integration might be the most appropriate approach. This is critical in determining whether you can meet the required SLAs, and it also has a big impact on things like scalability, responsiveness, and resilience of the overall solution. A third key activity is to do performance budget analysis, especially on those flows that directly impact the TCH five second service level agreement. Be very mindful of the fact that the longer the chain of critical systems involved, the more challenging it becomes to meet the SLA. Let's say for example that you have service A that calls service B, which then talks to a backend system such as a core. When you consider the res those response times added together, they may not comfortably fit within the TCH five second service level agreement. And if you're using a TPSP, you also need to factor in their processing time as well. If you run into situations where you know you can't meet the SLA or you believe it will be at significant risk, you need to carefully consider other alternative approaches such as potentially caching information. This could be appropriate in a received credit transfer flow, for example.